Well, it is length times width if you have what? If you have a rectangular shape. So if we do have a rectangular shape, with this is length and this is width, then the area of that will be length times width. All the stuff I'm going to be talking about today, it's right here on this cheat sheet. This is the rectangle, the triangle, the trapezoid, parallelogram, and the circle. The area, 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 area. So we have them there on that cheat sheet. So I'll just write them anyway. If your shape is a triangle, I'll do some examples. Triangle could look like this. So in this case, this is the base. From here to there is the base. The height always makes a 90 degree angle with the base. So it can't be, it has to be, this is the height. So the area of that, it's one half times the base times the height or base times height divided by two, either way. Sometimes the triangle look like this. This is the base. In this case, the height will be this. It has to make a 90 degree angle with the base. So still, base times height divided by two. If you, this is a triangle here. If you have a trapezoid, A trapezoid, you got the top and the bottom are parallel. The other two are not. They could look like this. That's a trapezoid. If this is 90 degree, that's the height then. We'll call this A and this is B. Or it could look like this. Then the height will be this. As only two sides are parallel, the other two are not. That's called trapezoid. So the area of that, it's the base um, A plus B times the height divided by two. A plus B, that doesn't look like A, but it's A plus B. You add this side to that side. You multiply it by the height and you divide by two. If your shape is parallelogram, parallelogram, this side is parallel to this and this side is parallel to that. That's a parallelogram. If this is the base, this is the height, then the area is base times height. And finally, I'll throw that and I'll do some examples. If we have a circle, This is the radius. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So those are the shapes you might see in this section. And I'll do some examples. And I'll give you some examples you can relate to where we use them. Let's say you have a kitchen and you want to tile the kitchen. The kitchen happens to look like this. It's 12 feet long by eight feet wide. And you're gonna to go to Home Depot or you're gonna to go to Lowe's and buy these tiles a foot by a foot that you peel the bottom and stick them to it. How many of these tiles you need to buy? 
The area actually covers the inside, covers this when we talk about the area. That's what you're covering. So this shape is what? What kind of a shape is this? Rectangle. That's a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is what? Length times width. So the length is 12 times the width is 8. 8 times 2 is what? 16, 6 carry 1, that's 96. Notice the unit, square feet. So, this section 3. Yep. So, if you go to Home Depot and you want to buy these square tiles to do that kitchen, you better buy 96. Maybe a few extra ones, maybe 100 just in case you make a mistake, cut some of them wrong or you break some of them. But minimum you need is 96 square tiles. And if you're good at it, you should be able to peel each one, stick them, and your kitchen is done. Which I don't advise. Yep, probably. Or, okay, since Jamie doesn't like them, I'll give you a hardwood floor. You have the kids' room now. Or the kitchen. You decide, well, they're going to make it now a hardwood floor. So when you spell something or a dining room, it doesn't make a mess. But the dining room now, it's actually a square. What does that mean? If it's square, the sides are equal. So how much hardwood are you going to need? The area of that is going to be what? Length times width. Well, since the sides are equal here, that will be what? 10 times 10, which is 100 square feet. Notice the unit, square feet with the two on the top because one for the length one for the width there's two of them two units a triangle well, where do you see a triangle well let me think I got it you still writing this Jamie you done? Okay. Let's say the garage. The side of your garage looks like this when you look at it. From the side. And you want to paint that. You need to know what that area is because when you buy the paint, it will tell you this gallon covers, for example, 400 square feet. So you need to know when you go buy the paint, how many gallons of paint you need to buy. Let's assume this garage has 12 feet long here. How high the garage is? 10 feet? 10, and we'll say this high tier is 4. So you can look at that as two pieces. This is one piece. That one. You got to paint this. Let's look at that piece. What is the area of that? What shape is that? Square. Well, it's not a square because the square of the sides will be equal, Jamie. But it's rectangle. So it's length times width. The length is what? 12. The width is 10. So what do we have? 120 square feet. Then we're going to add to that the top piece. That's this piece. And what's the area of that? What shape is that? Triangle. triangle. Triangle says base times height divided by 2. That's the equation we wrote early today. Again, all these equations are right here. All of them. So you don't have to memorize any of them. Triangle. Just written a little bit different, but it's base times height over 2. That's why I wrote here. Either one half base times height or base times height over two. I like this one better. So what's my base? What's the distance from here to there? 
12 times what's the height from here to there that's 48 divided by 2 which is what 24 square feet so to paint this entire side if you need to know what the area is going to be what the 120 for the bottom plus the 24 for the top you have 144 square feet Let's take another example. This example, you bought a piece of land because you want to build a house on it. So this is my land. Let's try to make it a little bit straight. I should bring a ruler here one day. So we bought this land that looks like this. So a decent sized land, it just happens to be a rectangular shape and it's 200 feet by 120 feet. And that's where you're going to put your house. So here you're going to build your house right there. This is your house. We'll give you some dimension for the house, which is what? Uh, I don't know, 60 feet by 30 feet. Then you put a driveway here as your driveway. Big driveway. Gonna put uh, multiple cars there. The driveway is 30 feet by 20 feet long. And in the corner here, we're not done with it, you put above ground pool. Above ground. Usually above ground pool, what shape is that? Circle. Most pools are circles, so let me put a pool here. Oh, there's my pool. Uh, come on. That's my pool. With the radius, I don't know, of 15 feet. And the question now, you want a sod because that's a new house. You want it to look nice. You're going to sod all that stuff right there. And how much sod you need to buy? That's where the sod is going to go. Wow, it looks nice. The sod is going to go right there where I'm putting these lines. It is. And sod, if you know, Jamie, is not cheap. So you don't want to go buy a lot of it if you don't need it. So I need to calculate how much sod I'm going to need. That's where the sod is going to go. Yep. So how do we figure what the uh, area there? Area 
Well, the sod, how much, how many square feet you need to buy? Okay. Okay. Let's find the area of the land. I like that. Yep, subtract these pieces from it. Yeah. Start with the piece of land. The piece of land was what? 200 times 120. It's length times width. It's a rectangular shape. Which is 24,000 square feet. Let's look at the area of the house. What shape is the house? Rectangle, so it's length times width. 60 times 30, which is what? 1,800 square feet. I forgot the square here. Area of the driveway. Again, rectangular shape, length times width. 30 times 20, which is what? 600 square feet. And finally, the area of the pool, which is pi times r squared. Pi is what? 3.14, and what's r? 15, you gotta square it. When you square the 15 is 225 times 3.14, approximately that's 707, 706.5 to be exact. So what's the area equal to? It's the area of the land minus the area of the house minus the, the driveway, because you're not putting side over the driveway, minus the pool. You take what you started with, which is the whole land, and the land is 24,000, minus the house, 1,800, minus the 600, minus the 706.5. Twenty-four hundred thousand. I mean, minus eighteen hundred, minus six hundred, minus seven hundred six point five equals twenty eighty-nine, or twenty thousand eight hundred ninety-three point five square feet. That's how much side you will need to do all of that. So sometimes you gotta be creative to find that area. Either add or subtract, it depends what you're looking for. I'll do another example or two. You have a square like this, 10 by 10. You had a piece of wood like this, and you came in with um, a saw, and you cut a circle from it. So once you cut a circle, what you have left is really four, four pieces, four corner pieces. And what's that area? So what do we do? We can start with what we started with. What was it we started with? It was a square. Area is length times width, or S times S, which is S squared. So 10 times 10, which is 100 square feet. What's the area of a circle? 
it's pi r squared. Pi is what? 3.14, and what's r here? R is what? Yes, r will be five, half of that distance. Because from here to there is 10, r is half of that. So that's 25 times 3.14, 78.5. So what is the area that's left? It's going to be the 100 minus 78.5, which is what? I didn't do anything with trapezoid, so I'll do an example with a trapezoid. I want to ask you a question on board here. Go ahead. What about when they tell you, right? So, like, how they say, like, not multiple, like, you know how to say, like, multiply this, like, on a map? Yep. Kind of how do you do this? Oh, scale, you mean the scale? Scale. Yep. Which you just put multiply? Yep. Yep, if there's a scale there, each one is like a scale of um, 10 to 1. Yep. Except for this, you've got to be careful because if it's 10 to 1, when you square that, don't just multiply this by 10 because that's R times R. So you've got to multiply it. If the scale is 1 to 10, you multiply it by 100. 10 for the first, 10 for the second. Or you go 10 times 5, 50, and you square that. Yeah. Now what about trapezoid? We have a shape that looks like this now. And this one is three, this one is six, and this one the height is two. Remember this side I called it A, this side was B, this is the height. And the area of a trapezoid is one half the base times A plus B or height, not B here. I said height and I wrote B. Or the height times A plus B divided by two. I like this one better always. So what's my height? Two, what is A? Three, what's B? Six. Two times three plus six, which is nine. Two times nine, which is what? Eighteen. Divided by two, and that's nine. If this were in inches, it would be inches squared. If it was feet, it would be feet squared. I'll do inches just to be different. I wrap it up with one more problem. I have two circles, inner one, outer one. The radius here is two and the radius here is three. And I wanna know the area between them. Looks like a donut. <laughs> What's the area? If you slice that donut flat and you look from the top, what's the area of that surface of that donut? How do we figure that one? How about we take the big circle, sub subtract from it the small circle? What's the area of the big circle? The area. It's pi r squared. So pi is what? 
And what's R for that circle? 3 and u squared. Twenty-eight point two six, inches squared. If it's inches, we'll use inches here. That could be a washer, you know, little washer for a screw there. And what's the area of the hole? That's the inside circle. Isn't that also a circle pi r squared? And that will be what? 3.14 times 2 squared. Twelve point five six. So what do we do now? Do we add them or subtract? subtract. You subtract. You take the big circle, the piece of metal before you put the hole in it. Twenty eight point two six. Subtract from it twelve point five six. Well, the CNC, you just give them all the dimensions, it's computerized, it's more complicated, you know? But that's what they do, actually. They take a big piece of metal, they cut a circle on the outside first, so they got a circle like this big, Jamie, then the machine will go drill another hole on the inside and throw that one in the trash, basically, or melt it and reuse it. But that's how you make that washer. I thought they were like calculation and all that. No, no, no. Uh, it's all, you draw the picture in, in um, CAD or SOLIDWORKS, and it does it for you. But that's what you do, 15.7 inches squared.